like that. Boom, 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 just like that. Eight, 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 productions, just like that. Like, comment, subscribe, just like that. Boom, wait a minute, just like that. Hey, Dub, you ready? Wait a minute. What's going on, Dub Nation? It's your boy back again with another video. And you see right here, we have the Viper Mini Pre-Treatment Machine. I'm so, so excited for this one, guys. Uh, we are going to test this out for the first time. Of course, I have my Viper Mini. It's plugged in. We got power. You can see the light on in the back. I've already adjusted the settings. If you guys don't know how to adjust the settings, you can uh, look at my unboxing video and I'll show you how to adjust the settings on that. We have a towel to dry. Ooh, we have a towel to dry off this table right here. Um, and we're just going to get busy. First thing I'm going to do, I have a bucket of water sitting right here on the floor. And I'm just going to take the uh, hose that would ordinarily go inside of the pre-treat and I'm going to put it inside the bucket. So the bucket is full of water and the bucket is going to act like my pre-treatment machine because we're just going to test this, test this Viper Mini out before we start spraying on some pre-treatment. So right here in the front of the Viper Mini, there is a knob. There's a little knob right here. You can turn this knob. If you get, if, well, let me tighten it up first. Tightened up this, the sprayer nozzle is right here on the tip and tightened up, you can't move it. But if you twist this knob, right, counterclockwise, you can now slide this, the sprayer up and down the, uh, up and down this, this rail right here. Now, obviously the closer you put this down, like your, your, your solution is going to spray close to the table, right? Or close to your shirt. And if you put this up, it's going to have a wider spray. All right. So we're just going to play around with it and to see, like, I'm going to put it right now medium distance. So I'm going to put this right here about the, to the number 14, and then I'm going to tighten it up. And now that I tighten it up, you can see that this sprayer is not moving anywhere. It's going to move this to the side for right now. And then we're going to do our first spray with the Viper Mini. So before I start, I want to tell you guys, break this down again and what we're doing. The water, we're pretending that the, like the water is our pre-treat solution. And we're just going to spray it on the table to see how much coverage this specific height gets us. All right. So I'm just going to sit the Viper Mini down right here. And I'm going to just test spray first and see... I'm gonna just push push this button right here and hold this with my hand with my hand. I got the the uh, holes of the Viper Mini held with my other hand right here, and I'm just gonna push this down and see how much coverage we get. I'm just pressing it down. Okay, now I see water coming out. All right, so it had to it had to suck some water in, and I just want to see how much water is gonna go in. So now I'm gonna um, spray it down, guys. I gotta be honest with you. Um, being 100% honest with you guys, this is putting down a lot of pre-treat and it makes me think like I haven't been putting down enough pre-treat, but I have to go do some research and see how much pre-treat I'm supposed to be laying down because that might be too much, all right? But it looks like it's not covering enough space. So I'm just gonna untighten this and raise this up a little bit above the like up to right here and then we're going to try it again to see if we get a wider area of coverage all right let's see it now so hypothetically my hands on the top of the viper and hypothetically there's a shirt laid down underneath here and i'm just going to push the button and let's so you guys see uh the coverage of spray of pre-treat in this case water that it'll be laying down here we go I mean, that's a good amount. You can come back up and make sure you push the button at the same time. Push the button hard, firmly. Not hard, but firmly. All right? And just, it just guides, it just goes back itself. If you tap it, if you half tap, like, then it won't lay down in your pre-treat. Right? But if you push all the way down, then it lays down the pre-treat. And I'm just pushing down lightly. All right, so this is kind of sensitive. And you can also hover, like you can like control yourself if you want to, I guess. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but I think this is dope. So far guys, and I'm just wetting this table up, trying to get the feel of it. 
right? So I do have to go and see how many grams a pre-treat is supposed to be laid down and adjust the settings right here on the screen. So let me do that right now. All right, everyone, the Viper Mini. Let's try to use this thing. But before we use it, we got to kind of understand the way it works. I want to break it down to you guys from how I um, understand it to help you guys understand better. I contacted Viper, the guys over at Viper, and I asked them, what is the correct setting for me to put this menu on to make sure that I'm putting down the right amount of pre-treat on my shirt? And you know what they said? Uh, there is no correct setting. And that makes perfect sense if you think about it because every shirt is different. Every brand shirt is different. The thickness is different. The material is different right the thread count is the, uh, there's all types of different variables so there can't be one universal answer to that question and let's face it you guys like to get an answer and like try it out and if it doesn't work you'll blame it on the company and say your product sucks it doesn't work but in most cases it's not really the case because there are a lot of variables with this stuff right so let me try to explain this menu to you so that you guys can kind of understand it all right, so let's let's get a little closer. This is the menu system that's on the back of the Viper Mini. This is the side, that's the back where the handle is, right? On the back of the Viper Mini, it's the menu system. So let's try to understand this. All right, so we got run and stop. And I thought I explained this in the last video, but I didn't because it wasn't correct, actually, what I was saying. So you got a stop and you got a run. So let's turn it, all right, you stop. It does nothing. None of these buttons do anything. Then you turn on run and that actually turns it on. And now you can kind of like do things. But you can only go down to 80% on the main menu. And this 80% is the wheel speed, all right? So there's no real way to control the amount of pre-treat that's coming out of the nozzle. What's coming out is what's coming out. What controls the amount of pre-treat is both how the height of this nozzle right here right the higher the nozzle right the um the less pretreat because it's spraying a wider field the closer the nozzle the more concentrated uh, the 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 uh, pretreat is in that specific area but the less coverage you're getting which makes total sense if you guys think about it all right and you guys look that's why it's important to test it you can look at look and see how how i'm um, laying the pretreat down so now Let's go a little bit further. I'll, I'm going to leave this at 100, right? You could just play with it right here and leave it on 100 and like have and, and use this right here if you want to. But the problem is you can't. You can only go to like 80 as far as the wheel speed is concerned. But if you go into the menu system, right, you press menu. Now, the only thing that's changed is this number right here. You got the same percentage type of number. So you can dial that all the way up to 100 if you want to right same percentage as was right as in right here same percentage right only thing that's changing is the number right um you got a, you got a one point right think of this as user number one or setting number one setting number one setting number one person number one myself likes to this for this wheel to turn at 80 percent speed all right, setting number one, I like this wheel to go at an 80% speed and I'm gonna manually adjust the height, right? So setting number two, this person likes the wheel to turn at a 20% speed. So let me get you guys to understand what that looks like and what that means. All right, so first I'm gonna go to number one which is 80% speed, and I want you guys to see how fast the wheel is turning, All right? When I push it, see how fast that's turning? Now if I go to number two, and it's a 20%, that should be less, should be slower. Let me put it at uh, 10% so you guys can see it even better. 10%, let me see, 10%. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna push the button and not the handle. All right, now let me, put, let me just go up to 80% right here. Let's see, matter of fact, let's go up to 100%. Let's see how fast it goes. You guys tell me if you see the difference or not. 
Seems like it's going faster. Not significantly faster. Is it going faster or is it laying down more pre-treat? Let me see. Let me go all the way down to 5%. Yeah, it's definitely the speed. It's definitely the speed, all right? But you can't tell the difference on camera, but it's definitely the speed of the wheel, all right? PWM out. PWM. Power motor, I don't know what that stands for, but that's what that is, all right? So you got up to five different users that you can program the, um, the speed of this wheel. All right, there's no way to tell this nozzle to spray out less pre-treat. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments down below if you have one of these, but I don't think I'm wrong because I've played around with this for a little while now. So at the end of each day, guys, at the end of each day, you wanna clean out your machine. And the way to clean out your machine is you take this, the, no, the nozzle, the hose out of the bucket, right? Can you guys see that? Take the hose out of the bucket right and then you just take your device you hold something up to it in my case i'm going to hold it to the bucket right here that i got down below here so you can't you guys can't see that let me um let me move this table out of the way a little bit so you guys can see it so i got a bucket right here I'm doing stuff on a fly so i'm just gonna hold my machine up to the bucket so the water can spray in the bucket and right here there's water in in this hose so to clean this out, you gotta dip it in some water and just spray it out so that all your pre-treat comes out of the hose, all right? If you don't do that and the pre-treat dries up in the hose and it dries up in the system, it could damage your machine. So that's really, really important. See how it's splattering right now? It's splattering because it's not getting any more pre-treat or in this case, it's not getting any more water because I'm cleaning it out because we're about to lay down some pre-treat on my setting, which is setting number one at uh, wheel spin 80%, all right? It's getting a little complicated now, I know, guys, but let me go ahead and set my machine up the way I want it to be, all right? And I said setting number one at 80%, all right? So now that I know what I want my machine to be at, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to get my pre-treat. I'm gonna shake it up. And then I'm gonna dip my hose inside of here, of my pre-cheat stuff, all right? You wanna make sure it stays down there, all right? I've shaken it up, dip my hose inside there. I'm gonna sit this on the floor, make sure it's secure somewhere. And then I'm going to take this nozzle and I'm gonna hold this up to the cup so I don't waste any pre-cheat. And I'm just gonna prime it. I guess this is priming it. You just uh, push this button right here. Make sure the back wheel is up so it doesn't go anywhere. And you just fill the hose up with pre-treat machine, with pre-treat solution while this catches the access so you can pour it back in a bottle and not waste any. All right, so let me do that right now. All right. So now you can hear it and you can see the hose is filled with pre-treat. So you can see the hose change color so you can see pre-treat in there. So now I'm just gonna take this access pre-treat and pour it back in our bottle right here. Waste not, want not, right? And this stuff is expensive. So pour it back in our bottle, waste not, want not. And now we're ready to pre-treat our first shirt. What they recommend you do is use this foam. I thought this foam was just used for packaging. They actually want you to put the foam at the bottom of the shirt. I don't know why. I'm gonna use it like they suggested for this demonstration but let's face it let's be honest and i'm going to be honest with everybody everybody you got to be honest with me most of us are just going to lay it down and pre-treat it let's be let's be real nobody's going to do this every single time we pre-treat like it's just not practical it just doesn't make sense it's just not time uh, efficient to lay this down but this does make sense in a sense of um when you lay it down, it helps the wheel spin, right? That's that's what they set it there for. And I can see some pre-treat leaking out of my um, nozzle right here. So I'm just gonna hold the hose with one hand, right? 
Uh, I got to make sure that pre-treat stays in a bottle. Stays inside that bottle, all right? All right, pre-treat's in the bottle. And now I'm just going to spray on my setting, 80%. All right? Let's see how this works. All right, so I can see right now that I'm going to need to put... Okay, looks like it's getting good coverage. All right. Hmm. It's getting good coverage. It's all up in here. I think I need to have my wheel spinning a lot slower to lay down a more consistent pre-treat. So right now, I'm just going to try it again with a dry shirt. But I'm just going to finish up this shirt right here. It's my first time doing it. I can't say... And the shirt is drenched, guys. The shirt is drenched. I can't say that I did it right. Let's just do another shirt for demonstration purposes, and I'm sure everybody wants to see it. I'm just going to see how this comes out. This is how I would normally pre-treat my shirt before I got this. So let's see how we do as far as, like, with the wetness. I would go... This is how I was normally pre-treating. You see, I'm not, I'm barely laying down anything, guys. And I think that's because I haven't been cleaning out my pre -treat. Now that I read the instructions of the uh, spray gun, I have not been emptying this out on a day-to-day -day basis. I just leave the pre inside. So I don't know if that has to do, maybe I ruined the spray gun. But also, the trigger affects how much pre -treat. I'm a little biased, guys. I'm a little biased because I've been using this for a while, so I can't give an accurate like comparison. And it seems like this is laying down less pre-treat than the um, sprayer, than the Viper Mini. I'm not sure if that's a good thing, if that's a bad thing, but it does seem like I have to have more effort to put down the same amount of pre-treat. And also, there's no way that I can be as accurate with this as I can with a Viper Mini, but I gotta spend more time with a Viper Mini to be certain that I love it. I see some, see some spots right here, All right? So, overall, I think ultimately the question that we'd want answered is, does the Viper Mini lay down pre-treat on a shirt more accurately than the Wagner spray gun and I would 100% have to say yes because it is there is some there is a bunch of consistencies in this that this does just not have right the wet the Viper mini has a bunch of consistencies that the Wagner spray gun cannot duplicate because the Wagner spray gun you're holding it with your hand this you're holding it at a set distance away from the shirt. So that within itself is a whole lot more benefit. Um, it's easier to train. But whether or not I love it, I guess when, you, when I put it like that, whether or not I love it doesn't even matter because it's more accurate. So I think it will probably be more beneficial for you to spend a little bit money, a little bit more money, and get the bigger Viper machine. But... I can definitely see where this would come into play. It's very portable. It's perfect for somebody like me that doesn't have the space for the Viper Max. So, like I said, I would have to spend more time with this machine to give it an accurate review. You can't review. It's not fair to review something just on the first use because uh, you haven't spent enough time with it. But it is doing a better job at laying down the pre-treat as you guys can see, than the Wagner spray gun, clearly. And um, there's a lot of variables, my hand placement, there's a lot of variables with that, right? So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Um, can't say that I love it, can't say that I hate it. It's not fair, I haven't spent enough time with it. It's my first time using it. So yeah, I gotta spend some more time with it and I'll give you guys an update um, in the next few weeks, right? If I have it, if I don't have it, you guys will see, you guys will know. So. You know what I mean? And I'll, and I'll, and I'll update, with, up, update you guys. So, uh, it's your boy, Alan Wade. Thank you so much for watching. This is my first time usage and kind of understanding of the Viper Mini 
pre-treatment machine. I'll talk to you guys on the next video. Peace. Turn up that, crank it up. I listen to the rest when you're rockin' with the best, baby.